Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anachi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. Sorry about that delay. My mouse wasn't coming back from my second screen, and I was confused. So, in the last episode, uh, Roxy and, and Dirk talked at each other. And in this episode, we're going to start off with her flirt LARPing with, uh... With not Dave. So, looks like it's just the two of us. Looks that way. Fancy they, that... Guess I can go back to talking in orange. Why, yes, you should definitely slip into something more comfortable while I pour you some robo-wine. We have much to discuss. Tense fingers together with sultry cunning. Actually, I think I like the red better. Okay, I can check the cellar. Might have some choice years left on the pin pot noir. I don't doubt the choiceness of those pin pots, but I'm not really here to screw around. There's something important to talk about. Aw, oh, dang. Jane's after me. Sorry, bro, it... It has to wait, can't leave Janie hanging. Alright, but just so you know, I think Dirk is probably going to make some sort of formal romantic overture towards Jake today. What? Really? Wait, really? I've been crunching numbers all day on this. The percentage of probability is simultaneously bananas and through the roof. A complete disgrace of tropical fruit erupting from the peak of an unassuming domicile. Oh my, how do you know? Because I've aggregated thousands of subtle clues indiscernible to primitive human neurology and rammed them through my determinative infatuation engine at the astonishing speed of information. And also because I'm pretty sure it's what I would do if I were him, which is literally the case. And also, because he kind of told me, I guess? There's that. Well, this should be interesting. Did you tell Jake, or not specifically? Man, does he even know how he feels? Hello, the poor guy is to totally under siege from all sides. <laughs> he knows well enough. I've badgered him with enough insincere solicitations to paint a pretty striking portrait of my cognitive progenitor's inclinations, even if he wasn't able to pick pick up on such hints from the man himself, which strikes me as statistically implausible. And that's not even me just spewing more ironic AI bullshit. I was never clear on that. Are you, like, both crunching on him, or is it real for him and ironic for you, or... It's complicated. No shit, says the robo-clone of the guy, smitten with the guy everyone else is smitten with, in including said robo robob clone maybe? Hey, can, can we hold this thought? Have to answer Jane. Mm. Yeah, answer Jane. Gutsy gumshoe, blah, blah, blah. Hey, hmm, Rolau? Oops, oh, sorry, what's having important chats? Oh, w with whom? With yet another ineligible fucking bachelor who else I have to talk to, previously continued. Anyway, if you're still there, I wouldn't call my feelings ironic, though evidently I wouldn't close them in quotes. They're more like an echo of feelings once established in a biological context, though perhaps had not particularly well materialized at that point in my life, or his life, whatever. They still feel real sometimes, and it can be easy to get carried away with them, but most of the time they present themselves as dense bodies of abstraction to be evaluated, like any kind of information. It's fair to say the feelings I have about my feelings are more genuine expressions of emotion than the ground-level feelings themselves. Does that make sense? Yes, sorry, distracted. Important shit going on with Janesy. That's fine. So to underwhelmingly answer your question, no, I don't think I'm really into Jake. Not so much as occasionally being subject to heavily arresting recalls of conflicted and incipient incipient preteen episodes on the subject. I'm not sure I can be into someone in a way you understand. Not that it would even matter if I was. I'm glasses. Damn. What? Sorry, I'm listening to you really, but I fucked up. Gotta make sure Jane doesn't run the file I sent. The virus? You sent it already? Sneaky. Ah, I'm such an ass. What are you two talking about? The bot line is, I'm a horrible friend. You could just tell her you sent her an exploding file. No, then she'll think I'm shitty. And right now she thinks I'm super not shitty. Don't want to blow it. I, I I think I'd rather pull a dirk and profess my undialing feelings for her. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, you have feelings for Jane? No, you dingnut. What's joke? Oh my fucking god, if Dirk tells Jake about his stuff, what about Jane? How's she gonna feel? Competing with a friend and all for a guy she can't even get up the nerve to say anything to. Poor Jane. It seems to be highly probable you are ensnared in the throes of one of your human romantic quandaries. Oh, shut the fuck up. Or, excuse me, shut the fuck up up. I need a drink. Are you even talking to her anymore? It seems like you must be neglecting her side of the conversation. I'm in the mipple of a germantic pause. Calm your fucking tits. Blob, blob, blob. Really? Sigh. Continue previously. 
Anyway, I won't distract you for much longer. I just felt the need to tip you off to this 800-ton gorilla dragging its knuckles across the horizon. Will this gorilla eat those ban bananas flying out of the roof, you said? No airborne fruit will be safe. I guess this is to be presented as something like a word of caution? If it's me going through with this, hypothetically, I'm not dropping some limp-wristed shucks buster on his ass and praying there will be horse gods of irony for reciprocation. There will be no rocking back and forth on pigeon-toed feet while my face flushes with the blood of a thousand timid bishies. I will not hold one tentative hand behind my head like a flustered asshole from an Asian cartoon, nor will an oversized bead of sweat overlap ludicrously with my visage. If it's me, I'm going all out. Oceans will rise. Cities will fall. Volcanoes will erupt. Uh. What I'm saying is, it's going to be a scene and bystanders need to brace themselves. Okay, about when is the big scene happening? Probably after the game begins. I expect he'll hold off on playing his hand until he and Jake are in the session. He's taking certain measures. For some reason, I think he's latched on to this notion that functioning as the client for a player is customarily a one-way pass to make out city with that player. Everything with him and me is a matter of assiduous tactical forethought. Making a play to get his Jones on for the J-Man is no different. Not sure what any of this quiet means, but it sounds spectacular. I can't wait, though I'm still kind of torn about how to feel about his chances versus Jane's chances. What do I say to Jane about this? It's hard being as totally sweet as a friend as I am, as me. It's hard and I, I know understanks, lol. And then no one understanks. Sorry to hear that. As ever, I remain an autonomous and dispassionate witness of the oddity that is human interactions while maintaining no investment in either outcome. Yeah, bullshit. Anyway, looks like I have to go. I have to prove some shit to Jane. Prove what? Oh, you know, just subjecting shit to the old madrigogs. It seems you just said madrigogs. What are madrigogs? <laughs> laughing. See you later, bro. Tipsy Nelson. She stopped. Janie, it seems to me that there is a mass chance of you being a huge tight ass and you are being a huge t Are you being a huge tight ass on me, Jane? Oh, God damn it! take the book. What do I care? Yes, that's the spirit. Now you're believing with petrol. I fail to see what offering up a priceless book for your wildly capricious science experiment has to do with my resolution to be less stingy with my beliefs, but all right. Oh, well, you relax about the book. I'm only just, I'm only just teasing, because there's, like, practically a 100% chance this won't walk like always. Work, work like always. So, ready? Yes, let's just get on with it. Ready up here, fire. Oh, there's, there's that. Mess, mess, mess. You push some buttons and mess with some knobby dealies and get totally ready to s subject shit to the major gogs. Um, mad riggers. Godcat. Frowning Jaspers. Roxy, aim. A purify. Plummet. It worked! The book is gone! Oh no! Ah shit! What is it? Shit 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 shit! Did you retrieve the book? Shit 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 shit! Don't tell me the book is damaged somehow, isn't it? Fuck! Continue tragically. Take book. Yep, he's dead. Totally sassa crushed. Looks like Sasker leveled up again. You just know that jilip guzzling bastard is scrambling up his echolighters we speak, chuckling to himself while he fills his pockets with ill-gotten boom dollars. Go ahead, old man, laugh it up. You guess you'll have to do something with the body now. Make a funeral? That sounds like the perfect way to say goodbye to an old friend. But the environment outside isn't particularly hospitable for a burial these days. It also sounds kind of depressing to host a funeral by yourself. It's probably best just to send him back to where he came from. Years ago, when you were exploring the lab, you found a machine somewhat similar to the ectobiology equipment. Without knowing what it did, you activated it, and out came this friendly cat in a handsome little suit. You still aren't sure where he came from, though, given the timestamp and coordinates on the machine, you have a feeling he belonged to your mother. If that is true, you feel bad about stealing her cat, let alone killing him. But you could never bring yourself to send him back. Until now, of course. She will probably want to know what happened to her disappearing cat even if it meant discovering him dead a little while later. The device uses huge amounts of power. The entire power supply was almost fully depleted using it the first time. You've stockpiled as much uranium as you could for another test run. Looks like this will be it. Take cat.
Oops, Silex is full. Gotta swap it with something. Probably as good excuse as any to break a new break in a new fenestrated plane. Retrieve mutant and kitten. You swap the bottle for with one of the dead cats. Uh you swap the bottle with one dead cat in it for another. You often use this little guy to break in the planes. Like an intrepid test pilot. Oh that's what that is. It's a it's a wine cellar uh modus. Not while it's in the bottle though. That would be ridiculous. Since the bottles are just Inventory abstractions. You have to break the bottle first before you can get serious about breaking some glass. Break the bottle. Clear some space. Need to get this bullshit out of the way. You can't work with like this with everything jammed down there in the corner. It's bad enough when you're. It's bad enough you're hammered. Break some glass. Your test pilot flew back out, which means the link between planes is working and stable. You can't even remember which one you linked, to, linked this up to. You guess you'll find out the fast way. Jump in. Youth roll! From the perspective of anyone observing the two windows from the outside, trans outside transport looks instantaneous, but for the traveler, there's always this gap of void between them? In your experience, the more significant journey the journey between planes is the wider the gap. This one is small enough to be negligible, though. Probably because it tends to lead to somewhere else in your house. You set up a bunch of these as little shortcuts to places around your house, as well as some places nearby, like the lab. It's a convenient way to hop around, though is isn't without some risk. You're still not sure what happens if one of the planes loses power while in transit, other than objects predictably getting uh, sliced in half while they're straddling the plane when the plug is pulled. You haven't come up with a good way to observe the consequences from the inside yet without using yourself as a guinea a gig, 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 guinea pig. And you're in such a hurry to try that me. And you're in as much of a hurry to try that as you are to look up the correct spelling of guinea pig, because seriously, fuck those particular pigs. Land already. When you are quite through with that tomfoolery, you find yourself in the household observatory. You keep it very cool in here and use it to store pumpkins you've purified from around the world, especially from Jake. That guy is sticking rich with pumpkins on his dumb tropical island. It would never occur to you otherwise to be so grabby with pumpkins, but they just happen to be the most easily purifiable vegetable on the planet for reasons that make no sense. And it's not like you can just stop swiping vegetables, you've got your own mysterious reasons. Hey look, incoming message. Answer the message. Uranium number up again, cheering tipsy nostalgic. There you are! Trick you on the track down, you are. Oh yeah. Don't know why I've been, why I don't know why I've been goofing here or been right here around goofing for hours. I read the fuck out of that wrong. Oh no doubt. Methinks it has less to do with your actual whereabouts as it does with your virtues as a hero of void. Okay, but you never say what stuff like that means when you say it though. Is this more casual spoiler shit? Casual! And yes, somewhat. However, with these spoilers by their nature, the more time that passes for you, the less relevant it becomes to guard their secrecy. As you approach your entry, details I have obscured will become more plainly evident. So I see no harm in loosening my tongue with certain matters the closer you get to the appointed hour. So you're saying I have, like, these magical void powers? Yes. Sounds like kind of shitty and boring powers to me. What could they even do besides make me invisible to, uh, to an alien sometimes? Alien. The void aspect is fascinating, though. Its heroes preside over the essence of lack or nothingness, the obfuscation of knowledge, or its outright of destruction. Snooze. Well, I think it can be wonderful. In any way, one can hardly draw many conclusions about a player by aspect alone. The aspect is channeled more specifically by the assets of one's class. So, when you can't see me when I'm doing my voidy thing or whatever, what do you see? Is it just a black screen? Pretty much? Hmm. Hmm? Is it just... That footage of my mom, uh, is it, it's just that footage of my mom does that too, like, blacks out and stuff? Mom was on a, uh, notorious scourge to the paparazzi, excuse me, papiazzi, or I mean, the woman who I'm supposed to be genetically descended from. Well, mom, you know what I mean? I understand what you're getting at, yes. It is certainly possible that we may have common ground with our ancestors when it comes to our aspects and the way our abilities reveal themselves to us. I cannot rule this out, but there's always more to examine. For instance, a hero of life and a hero of doom have aspects as different as can be. But if their classes are different enough as well, that is, one active and the other passive, remarkably there's a chance they could end up with very similar abilities. 
Player abilities may also manifest in ways in defiance with their aspects if they are heavily resistant to their true calling, or if corrupted by s in some way by an outside influence. But it is rather clear to me that you are you're one who embraces her aspect quite heartily even if you're not aware of it. So, deep down I'm super psyched about nothingness. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh damn, hey, I almost forgot I had a really short but cool dream I figured you might like this. Oh yes, everyone is having important dreams as we near our mutual entries. This is lovely. Please tell. I saw someone I think was supposed to be my daughter. Do you know if that's true? Can you just describe her? I don't know why I'm stuttering so much today. Uh, well she looked kind of like me, but in this orange get -up, up with a yellow sun on it. She sounds to me like the well-known figure of legend, or at least well-known to those who make the study of such matters into their all-consuming pastime. I believe you saw the Seer of Light. So, okay, like, let's say she's definitely that. Then, does that mean she's not my daughter, or spoipers? Ex exactly how much spoipage are we talking to? It would normally be my instinct to supply a vague response here, but I think your heart has already told you the answer, and, and as such, my secrecy would be purposeless. So, yes, that she was. Ah, yes, I knew it. So then, Space Lady, can you tell me who's this lucky, who the lucky fella is? Fella, what do you mean? Come on, you know, who I get future busy with to make the light see your babies. Oh, yes, pardon my sluggishness on the uptake. We're very different species, reproductively and familially, remember? Shake my head. Signs deeply muttering Lalians to self. That I think is something I cannot say, or that is, should not say. Oh, come on, you're already telling me stuff. Oh, please, don't press me for information. It makes me feel terribly guilty. You, you have no idea how much I would fancy revealing everything and make and exchange our stories endlessly, but I must show restraint. Please? What if, what if I guess stuff? Is it is it Strider? Does he, like, get ungay for a while or such? You probably don't even know what that means on account of, uh, on account of being extra me, text terrestrial. Can aliens be gay, too? Is that a thing? Being space gay? Um... Oh man, embarrassed alien is embarrassed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not embarrassed, I just don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but seriously, is it him? Um, maybe? Or is it like some ecto-bio shit instead, and a dude ain't really involved? Um, maybe. Man, wouldn't that just figure? That would suck, why do you have to go and confirm my bleak dudeless future? I confirm no such thing, Roxy. You're being frightfully difficult. You just keep pushing and pushing, and I, I may, can maintain my composer for only so long. Okay, I'm sorry. If you're really curious about the events surrounding your daughter's origin, you can always ask her in person when you meet her. So you mean I'm going to meet her in the game? Oh, well, yes, but... I'm not sure if I should have revealed that just now. You see what happens... So you see what happens when you push me? There's so much for me to keep track of, and it gets very difficult to remember what information to reveal at what time when you are flustered. Okay, so without pushing and frustrating you, let me just see if I have all my facts right. I will meet my... My cool as hell daughter from the future in this game. Yes, basically. And I will also meet my mother in this game. Yes. And the game will let me resurrect her from the dead, and that's what I'm going to do. The game provides a mechanism for the revival of the deceased, yes. It is called a kernel sprite, and you are free to gather remains of any dead party you choose to revive that individual in the form of a sprite. The sprite will then serve as a helpful spirit guide on your journey. Yeah, but you cleverly dodged the cue. That's how, you, that's how you say it works, but will I do that? I believe I was very forthright in my answer. If you play the game, you will meet your daughter. If you play the game, you will meet your mother, too. Simple as can be. Nero's eyes with drunken suspicion. So yeah, to continue my confirmation spree, you are maybe kind of handing their ecto shenanigans that lead to the birth of my daughter, just like I descended from my mom through some sort of similar bioprocess. Those are definitely some things which you believe could be true or not true. Eloy, you are such a shitty liar. I am not any kind of liar. Come on, what's answer? Yes, no. Or should I say, yes, no, you. You! I choose you! <laughs> you love yous. I do love yous. You're silly. Silly and cute and bad at lying. But I really don't lie! I'm not deceitful by nature, but in order to protect the integrity of certain outcomes while still being helpful to you, I guess I'm learning the art of deception through honesty? Which, as it turns out, as well as intended as it might be, still comes across as a savvy lass like yourself as just another kind of equ equivocation. Though I guess I shouldn't be so startled that a rogue of void could bewilder me so. 
Void players are said in text to have a way with flummoxing even those with plans beyond mortal understanding. And I'm far from anyone like that! Just a girl who wants to help. Shell pester log. How long is this? Holy shit. Okay. Little hands. Okay, well, since you're so nice, I'll promise not to use my wicked void powers regarding basic common sense, plus skills of deduction to bust you up so bad. I'd be ever so grateful. Then, without giving you the whole third degree, what is safe to tell me? Like, what does it mean to be a rogue of void? Like, that's what I am, right? Yes, I can tell you plenty about that. A rogue is a passive class. You see, there are passives, plus, and active, minus, classes. Some are strongly passive or act, uh, more strongly passive or active than others. The plus minus distinction can mean many things, but you could be quite roughly summed up in this way. Active classes exploit their aspect to benefit themselves, while passive classes allow their aspect to benefit others. But of course, there's plenty more to it, and that rule is in no way absolute. Only a starting point for understanding the dichotomy. You mean kind of like offensive versus defensive magic in an RPG? Sure, that's that's another fine way of looking at it. Classes always come in plus or minus pairs with significant disparity between them. While a rogue is passive, a thief would be its far more active counterpart. The rogue and thief classes tend to be assigned to females, not exclusively, but commonly. Other classes lean more towards male as assignment, while others are exclusively male, and just as many are exclusively female, like my class. That's a bit of a tangent, though. To answer your question about being a rogue, I should tell you both classes in plus and minus pairs tend to have very similar descriptions. In this case, a rogue or a thief is one one who steals. Quite simple, really. But whether the class is plus or minus makes all the difference. It is a great indicator as to how a hero will make use of the aspect. So, basically, a thief is like the asshole class, the player who steps off shit's, ste ste step off shit's mind suckers, whereas a rogue is basically Robin Hood. If that reference to your culture provides a suitable comparison, then absolutely! So I'm essentially the Robin Hood of Void. I'm still not sure what the fuck that actually means. Understandable. I guess Robin Hood's pretty cool, though. Thieving up loot from peeps who got too much, then all sugar daddy it out to the needy like a boss. Just don't have a clue how that works with Void. Yes, it is one of the more conceptually nebulous pairings, I agree. And I can't say I know a smashing good deal about the nature of the Void player's path, since the aspect is, by definition, inscrutable to those it does not choose. But I can at least tell you this. If you are ever able to enjoy full ascension as a rogue of Void, you will be able to do some completely astonishing things. Like what? Oh no, you will not pry this out of me. Not to preserve causality, but to keep the surprise in store for you. It would not be honorable of me to spoil the discovery, should you be fortunate enough to realize your potential. Well, about that... I feel sort of stupid about this, but I've been giving all my friends this whole dra dramatic spiel about not wanting to even play this thing, and I might have fucked stuff up already. Is that so? It's it's so, and I guess I still haven't decided what to do. There are props and, con and cons to both things. Would you mind listing them? Okay, either I don't play, and I get this kind of passive-aggressive revenge of the witch for killing my mom, and thereafter keep staying here and being lonely, or I do play, and the spoilers are as follows. Sweet powers for me, check. Trigenerational Lalan family reunion, check as fuck. Meet all my friends, heck a check. And some uh, schmo others and uh, stuff. All fine points. Is there any? Is there nothing I can do to make this decision easier? Nah, but thanks. You already have anyway. I will probably play. Wonder if I can tell uh, Destry without looking like a waffle ass chump. What's a waffle ass chump? Is it, a, is it Earth Cuisine? Nah, no, it's just a shithead. This doesn't... This doesn't matter now, Now though. I can't play till I go deliver this dead cat back in time to my, maybe, mom or something? Or some shing? That's another statement. It doesn't make a good deal of sense to me, but if it's important to you, then Godspeed! I'm so pleased to hear you are learning it, leaning in favor of persi blah, 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 participating with the rest of us. I promise we'll all have a ball together. Now, I have a busy schedule to keep up with, so I must go, but please remember you can always contact me if you have questions. Don't be a stranger, love! Ta! Uranian Umbrus uh, sees cheering tipsy nostalgic, and that's probably a good stopping point for this episode, and in the next episode, Roxy will proceed to the lab to save the game. Now, initially, I was doing one game a day and one homestuck a day. It's going to take me a little while to get back into that, so I don't know when... 
exactly the next episode is going to be after this. Might be tomorrow, might be next week, might be July. I don't know. But 413's coming up, so I should probably still be doing episodes clean through April. Because look at this. We're like a week and some change away from the comic having ended a year ago. I gotta, I gotta put an episode out on 413. I, I just have to. So anyway, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This is episode 79 of Let's Read Homestuck. And the next episode, Roxy's gonna proceed to that lab. And I will see you next time. Later.